Oh, Adrian, I'm a scary dementor, Adrian. Dalton. He ain't going back to Hogwarts this year, Adrian. For the last time, put that ain't away. Ain't nothing but chocolate gonna stop me, Adrian. All right, that'll do. Welcome to Strip Cover Lit. This is Unbearable. I'm Dalton Gentry. This is Adrian Fort. Harry Potter. That's the best transition I've got right now. Thank you for ruining it. It's a very rigid start. You are Adrian Fort. I'm Dalton Gentry. We do this every day. Let's talk Harry Potter, Adrian. Chapters four through six of The Prisoner of Azkaban. Are you done? Are you done? I'm done. Okay. Uh, so, brief rundown uh, for chapters four through six. If you're not reading along with us, which you should be reading along with us, a lot of people are, uh, shoot out your own video chapter by chapter. Put that uh, strip cover lip book club on it. And yeah, thank you, Peter <laughs> Look Clark. At you, you pimp. Look at that. Uh, and so we can watch this. I can watch this. Adrian can't. Uh, the Leaky Cauldron, Chapter 4. We get a little bit of life in Diagon Alley. Uh, a Harry is met with, you know, the moral dilemma of childhood adolescence. I've got all this money. Uh, but he's responsible with it, so that's good. Teaching the kids good things. Uh, we learn a little bit more about Sirius Black. Uh, it appears that they are trying to protect Harry from Sirius. Uh, chapters 5, The Dementors, we get to meet Professor Lupin on the train to Hogwarts. Uh, we get to see the Dementors for the first time, who naturally attack Harry. And we find out that Hagrid is going to be teaching care of magical creatures, so good for Hagrid. And finally, Chapter 6, Talons and Tea Leaves. We get to meet Sybil Trelawney, the divination professor. We get to meet Buckbeak, the hippogriff, and Hagrid's first class goes horribly wrong. Uh, and Trelawney predicts Harry Potter's death, which apparently she does every year. So, Adrian, how do you feel? Feeling better? Last week was a little rough. Getting somewhere? This is just <clears throat> the same thing. This is pain by numbers. This is not pain by numbers. There's more going on here. We're setting things up. I guess we're 400 pages away from the last time we got the same crap. <laughs> but it is the same crap. Okay. Uh, I'm not saying it's necessarily bad. Uh, it's painful for me. I don't think that it's ne it's not bad writing. Um, it is definitely not bad if you were. I mean, if you're if you're a kid, I'm sure this is just heaven. Okay. Right. I, I really hope that if anyone ever replies to us via Twitter, it is J.K. Rowling, and it's just a reply to something you say. Well, yeah, fuck you too, buddy. <laughs> that would make my life. Like Stephen King did. Like Stephen King did. Yeah. Uh, so, um, speaking of that, King's Cross. Is this a nod to Stephen Are King? Are you still pushing the Stephen King nods? There's there's connections. Are you still pushing Carrie and Harry? Carrie and Harry. Which my Harry Carrie. Harry And it's all full circle. If you want a hot dog. It's all full circle. Uh, there could be some interesting fan fiction being pushed out with Carrie and Harry, which uh, yeah. I Unfortunately, Adrian said that we could not review fan fiction for the channel, although I think that would be delightful. Little it, Harry Potter fanfic. <laughs> <laughs> See what I'm doing there? Just plugging it all in? Because that's what the people want, Adrian. I do not like you. Let's make it happen. Anyway. I had my first fangirl moment. Did you really? I did. Uh, it comes about that Hermione's birthday is in September. I thought perhaps we had the same birthday. You actually looked it up, didn't I you? I knew it would be on Google. You looked it up. I looked it up. We do not share a birthday. I'm sorry. How are you feeling about Hermione? Hermione. How are you feeling about Hermione? How are you feeling about Hermione? I mean, my, my Midwestern my. accent came out real thick. Uh, uh, Hermione. She was your favorite character throughout the first two novels. Her and Snape. Yeah. How are you feeling about her in this novel? She's a little more distant. Yeah, ha this. hasn't done much yet. Okay. Which brings up a question for me because she hasn't done much, but Neville has come completely back. I forgot about Neville uh, As entirely. most people do. Right. So it makes me wonder if Neville dies. Okay. Uh, we'll because it goes from, goes from zero to, hey, here's, here's Neville. Um, I believe you have a comment on the chocolate and the use of chocolate. Is that correct? Um, no. No. <laughs> so, Dementors, uh, take all the happiness from you. Right. But and destroy chocolate. your soul. And chocolate 
is the one thing that revives you and brings you back. Just from the Dementors? Chocolate. Or from other things as well? Uh, apparently, chocolate is stereotypically used by the female gender you as a sexist. perk. Uh, and I think that is J.K. Rowling plugging stereotype. But Harry Potter is not a female character. No, but let's look at it this way. J.K. Rowling's in her infancy writing. She's like, I'm sad. What makes me happy? Chocolate. So she gives it to Harry Potter. Dalton, you opened that can of worms in the comments section. I'm it? not saying that it's me being sexist. I'm just saying... It's a sexist observation to make. That's how I read it. Were you not sexist, you would not have seen that in the first place. I'm just That's saying how it. I read it. I'm a little disgusted right Simply now. Simply because you are trying to make me the bad guy in here where I am normally perceived as the victim. Well, I, I, imagine, I imagine that normally the firestorms in the comments section go... Aid Adrian brought this up, I am angry now, when you say, He's such a horrible person! I don't like him either! That's how I Save comment everything back shit. from Harry Potter. I'm just like, yeah, he's really mean, actually. Oh, that's a good point. We tried to make it, but he hit me. So, yeah, that's how this works. Uh, so, where do we go? Lupin! We're, we're, we're talking, while we're talking, um, maybe not intertextual relations, but uh, inspirations. Okay. The, the comment we keep getting on Dumbledore's appearance is that his nose is horribly crooked. Okay. Now, when you contrast, not contrast, when you, when you add this to the fact that Dumbledore is incredibly intelligent, seems in a very soft-spoken manner, right? Uh, but is also very funny. Is Dumbledore inspired by Stephen Fry? Oh! Well, that's something I haven't connected ever. Uh, maybe. I mean, no. British character. Brit or character. British person. Also, Stevie Fry's big and... Very crooked nose. Which is, which is, like, if you were going to describe Stephen Fry... You would describe Dumbledore. Right. You, if you were going to describe Stephen Fry to someone who you know has seen one of his movies, yeah. what would you say? Dumbledore shaved. Well, he's got the crooked nose. Yeah. He's the guy with the nose, yeah. right? I'm not trying to uh, point that out, but it's out there. It's an interesting observation. He's uh, very and intelligent. He's, he's very, very soft-spoken. Yes. He's um, very funny. Now, back to reality. Uh, I think the crooked nose more so symbolizes that although Dumbledore is very soft-spoken and wise, he is the Teddy Roosevelt almost. Uh, speak softly, but carry a big stick. Dumbledore's seen things. Dumbledore's a badass. Well, Dumbledore's had his ass kicked, right? I mean, he's got a, those very crooked nose. He's nuts. got war scars. Yeah. And maybe that's, I mean, that's what brought him wisdom, and that's what makes him the man he is now, and he keeps that calm demeanor, because the old boy's been there and done that. Uh, that that's the way I'd take it. Uh, although the Stephen Fry thing is just delightful. Thank you for that. Right? I mean, when you... I'm disappointed you, they I, didn't... I understand that in the movie he's played by... Uh, What's his name? I don't know. Two Mag characters Magneto. play. No. No? No. That is Gandalf. That's... Ga okay. That, well, that's... Okay, who played Dumbledore? Uh, two characters actually played Dumbledore. Two actors. Uh, two actors. Uh, the original Dumbledore passed away, I believe, after the second or first movie. I can't remember. Uh, he was replaced. I cannot think of the actor's name at the time. Uh, I am completely okay with both Dumbledores. You actually get two visions of Dumbledore. Uh, the first one is the very old, very quiet, very timid Dumbledore. The actor who replaced him played him as a more playful character, but the the wisdom and the wit in the second actor's portrayal, wonderful. Just wonderful. Do you hear that? What? Do you hear it? There's still people crucifying me in the comments section for mixing up Dumbledore and Gandalf. Oh, yeah, you, you made a mistake there. I haven't seen any you of those made movies. a mistake. Uh, <laughs> it's that old guy with the beard. It, it, it's okay. I thought he would, he would make a great Dumbledore, wouldn't he? Uh, what's his name? Gandalf. What's the guy who played Gandalf's name? Ian McKellen? Ian McKellen. Make a great Dumbledore, would he not? Yes. But you can't have the same character be Dumbledore and Gandalf. Uh, you cannot I cross think you could. my genres like this. Don't cross the streams. Don't cross the streams. Uh, anyway, so uh, you got to meet Professor Lupin for the first time. I've said it many times, Lupin's going to be your favorite. A lot of people agree with me that you're going to like Lupin. Really? How you feel about him? He seems so far like 
the English professor you had that you know should have retired. Okay. He's dressed out of his age. He's got cobwebs on him. Disheveled. Yeah. Um, he does stand up and take charge in the face of a Dementor. Yep. Which we've, which we've learned are very uh, intimidating deals. Yes, and this is the first Defense Against the Dark Arts teacher who shows a little oomph. Yeah. And I believe it's even commented, uh, I, I think it's McGonagall says, well, at least this one knew what he was doing, something like that. I thought it was Hermione. Uh, no, I think it was McGonagall talking to the uh, hospital wing nurse okay. about no, you're right. the you're chocolate, right. saying, right. well, at least this guy knew what to do. Right. But uh, Hermione, I think, if I'm not mistaken, takes note when he gets up and takes action. Okay. Right. Uh, but if you do look at the transition from Gilderoy Lockhart, this is polar opposite. This is the man who knows what he's doing. He's here to do a job, and he's obviously going to do the job well. We don't know much about him yet. We haven't got there. Uh, I am still saying you are going to love and adore Lupin. Okay. Uh, and poor, poor Lupin. We'll poor get there. Lupin. Poor, poor Jesse. <laughs> we'll get there. Uh, Dementors. Yeah, on page 92, we get this quote from Gandalf. They are stationed at every entrance to the grounds, Dumbledore continued, and while they are with us, I must make it plain that nobody is to leave the school without permission. Dementors are not to be fooled by tricks or disguises, or even invisibility cloaks, he added blandly, and Harry and Ron glanced at each other. It is not in the nature of a Dementor to understand pleading or excuses. I therefore warn each of you, each, every one of you, to give them no reason to harm you. I look to the prefects and our new head boy and girl to make sure that no student runs afoul of the Dementors, he said. Even old Gandalf knows these Dementors are not to be toyed with. You are pissing people off with a fervor this week. Uh, we have talked about doing strip cover lit t-shirts. Uh, we're going to have to get one with like Ian McKellen's Gandalf that says, welcome to Hogwarts. <laughs> Uh, that's funny. Um, yeah, Dumbledore knows we don't mess with Dementors. Uh, I, I, I think I think I think you need to put another word in there. It is not Dumbledore knows you don't mess with Dementors. Even Dumbledore knows you okay. don't mess with Dementors, right? Yes. Even Dumbledore, the great powerful Oz, Gandalf. Great, powerful Oz. And we will find out through Lupin that Dumbledore, or through Lupin, that Dumbledore, that Dementors are. You can combat them. You can. You can take care of the problem if you know what you're doing. Uh, but if you don't know what you're doing, they will suck your life away. They seem like Sentinels, almost. It's, yes, very similar to Sentinels. Uh, and that's what they're used for. They're the guards of Azkaban. They're the faceless, soulless, uh, just uh, first creepy characters you get who just float and guard. Yeah, my favorite part of that quote, it is not in the nature of a Dementor to understand pleading or excuses. Yeah. Right? They'll kill you. No problem. They're motivated sons of bitches. Now, no excuses. We are going to find out later in this, you know, novel how you combat a Dementor and what a Dementor is. Is it with chocolate? It's not with chocolate. You don't spray chocolate from your wand and cover them in a delicious morsel. Uh, other professor that we met, Sybil Trelawney, the divination professor. Any big thoughts on her? Uh, obviously, McGonagall does not care for her. She dismisses divination as a lesser magical art. Hermione gets on board with that. She's not good at it, so she's like, ah, nope, I'm out. <clears throat> Must be for stupid people. Yep. Uh, T. What about T? T, T, T. Yes. Look, if uh, Amy from the Dusty Bookshelf ever becomes a patron, because we buy these lovely action figures for all of our patrons, uh, we will get her a figure of Professor Trelawney. Professor Trelawney. Because, uh, boy, all that tea. That She drinks a lot of tea. She yeah. does. Uh, Though I doubt Amy smokes weed, and Trelawney obviously smokes weed. Trelawney smokes a lot of weed. Yeah. Uh, but that, that's a, a thing that with divination. If you look back towards fortune telling, things like that, uh, I always read Trelawney as kind of a gypsy. Uh, the gypsy fortune teller. Okay. The, the reading of tea leaves, that's a thing. That, that was a thing. Right. Uh, so I can understand it. Uh, to use it as an actual magical art is very interesting. Uh, speaking of things that were things before they were things in Harry Potter, Buckbeak. We get a hippogriff. Well, if we're, go if we're going to go that route, real quick, things that were things in Harry Potter before real life, this silver ladder, is that Google? Okay, that's interesting. You ask for the silver ladder, the silver ladder takes you... It doesn't matter what you really search for. Yeah, it'll, it'll, it took you there. It'll take it. It got you. That's interesting. That's really interesting. Uh, 
I also I love the brag, fact, but, you know. Yeah, I know. I read into this stuff. Look at you. I'm I love the fact that even the staff keeps Trelawney as far away as possible, <laughs> and it's even mentioned. She's like, well, she doesn't really come out much. <laughs> Amy's up just... there in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, Don't kill me. <laughs> uh, and Trelawney has predicted Harry Potter's death. Harry Potter going to die. Right. Uh, which apparently she predicts a new student every year is going to die, and it never actually happens. Uh, but, of course, this year it's Harry Potter. Not to this point. I'd be interested in seeing who those other students were or whether they die in the series. Okay. If people die. You said people will die in the series, right? People will die in the series, and this is... Are there is... people of different classes that die? Oh, yes, absolutely. Well, the, okay, here's the thing. We I, talked... wonder, I wonder if her day is yet to be had. We did Carrie about a week ago, and I said Stephen King is ruthless. Yeah. If J.K. Rowling took anything from Stephen King... Is the Ruthless Rowling? Uh, year 7 is prom night. Oh, okay. Okay. So I'm excited again. There's a little hype. You can at least see some of them. Just I'm excited wasted. again. Uh, yeah, year 7 is prom night. And if Stephen King just killed people for the sake of killing people, J.K. Rowling does because she knows it will hurt you. She took your childhood heroes and massacred them. That's what I'm trying to do now. You will. She got it before me. Anyway. I'm upset now. Uh, Buckbeak, the Hippogriff. Uh, we talked a little bit about mythos, uh, Greek mythos being like uh, spliced into the magical world with uh, centaurs. We called out those centaurs. We called too. out those centaurs. A lot of people like uh, that. Uh, uh, now we I want, have. I want to pat on the back. You want to pat on the back? Good for you, as soon sir. As soon as I saw Good the damn you. things, I knew what was happening. Uh, but now we have a hippogriff. Yes. Uh, we don't know much about the mythos behind hippogriff. We'll I didn't read know. They, yeah, I didn't know they were real things. Well, uh, not real things, but they were actual. Uh, I thought. I thought maybe Rowling made them up. I didn't know. No, comes from the poet Virgil. We did read that, but we didn't read much about hippogriffs. Uh, however, Buckbeak is going to be a central character in this novel. Uh, it's going to be, there's a lot of importance with him. Oh, then I'm going to imagine that there is uh, I'm hoping there symbolic is. significance. I'm hoping there. you are going to pull some uh, tomb of mythology off your shelf from back here, and you're going to call me like in five or six hours be like, hey, got it figured out. By tomb of mythology, do you mean I will direct message Steve on Twitter? <laughs> <laughs> Steve, I need help. It'd work, it'd work. <laughs> uh, I just assumed Google was Steve. <laughs> <laughs> just Steve behind a, behind a keyboard. <laughs> Although I imagine he's a hunting pecker. No, no, that man probably types a uh, hundred words a minute. Well, Christopher Hitchens did too, but he was a hunting pecker. Really? Yeah. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, there's several. I've I've seen several. Uh, like he was on 60 Minutes towards the end of his days, and uh, there's this scene of him one of these cut scenes that they do before and after commercials, and it's him stooped over his. His uh, computer, just one finger at a time, baby, That's going incredible. after it. Yeah, uh, especially with his as prolific as that man was. Prophecy. Prophecy is often tied with religion. The dismissal of divination and prophecy as a lesser art and wish wash. Can we say that's dismissal of religion? Look at you. I'm trying to bring you into this world. I didn't even I didn't even pick up on that at all. So can we go that route? Yeah, absolutely. And who is the person who dismisses this? The, the most Gryffindor. academic yeah. and the most educated are the ones dismissing prophecy. Mm. Okay. Mm. I like that. I don't have to look into it in the future. You're welcome for that little tidbit. Um, I am hoping that uh, Trelawney does not end up winning the day somehow. We'll see. Okay. A couple more questions I have. Sirius Black is set up as such a villain that I wonder if he's a hero. Okay. And uh, Hagrid becoming a teacher. For some reason, during, during the course of reading this, I started down that rabbit hole of wondering, this school is putting out, we'll say it's a mid-sized American high school, right? So okay. you're talking 800 graduates a year. All right. We'll just put it right around there. We'll say that's what this, the size of... Uh, Hogwarts is. You've got 800 new witches and wizards every year. Only so many of them become professors. What in the hell are the rest of them doing? <laughs> they uh, can't all work at Ask Cuban. The Ask Cuban. Well, you do have government. You have the Ministry of Magic. Uh, as you're going to find out later, there are sports stars. There's the Quidditch World Cup. Uh, you're going to find out that this is not the only magical school. There are other ones. They're going to get visitors from other countries, other areas. Um, and as uh, J.K. Rowling has recently put out on Pottermore, uh, there's just uh, the world as we know it. 
is littered with schools. Uh, there's schools in the United States which are going to play part in her movie uh, Magical Beasts and Where to Find Beast, Them. Yeah. Uh, because they travel to the United States. The guy starring in that, by the way, Eddie Redmayne or something like that? Mm -hmm. Terrifying looking. Yeah? Yeah, that, that is the type of person that should populate your nightmares. Good, good. I don't I know like why, that. but he's terrifying looking. Uh, so there's, there's a lot witches and wizards can do. Uh, we're just getting the snippet of Hogwarts. Uh, now once we get to Hogsmeade, the village, you're going to find out that there are shop owners, proprietors, things like that. Did you just spoil that for me? No! I did not know Harry Potter got to go to Hogsmeade. Dalton. Let's be honest. Dalton. They said third years go to Hogsmeade. People are going to Hogsmeade. Who signs his paper? You'll find Is out. Is he adapted by Hagrid? Shut up. Uh, anything else I'm you really... I'm so distraught. No, you're not. You knew it was coming. Is there anything else that you'd like to talk are about Are you saying that these books are predictable? You knew it was coming. That in every one of these books, there is some existentialist sort of magic-y thing that Harry Potter is supposed to be able to do, but because the fact that he lives his entire summer with hateful muggles, he might not be able to do. That in every one of these books, uh, a situation like that arises and is squelched. Is that what you're telling me? I, I really just want to ruin it for I you can't now. stand it. Can I ruin it for you? No. Please? Shut up, Dole. I can ruin it for I'm you. I'm having a moment. Uh... We're getting rebellion later. So Does piss he on you. forge a signature? Piss on you. Uh, anyway, anything else you want to hit? I have one more big thing. One more big thing. That this is me. I swear, if you go back to fat shaming in Harry Potter, I will. I will hit you. Never mind then. What do you have? No. What's J.K. Rowling's first name? Uh, jo Joanne. J.K. J.K. I'm looking at you right now. This is a heart-to-heart -heart moment. This is you and me talking. How interesting would a new series be that follows Hermione on her journey as a professor? She's a strong female character. It tells children, girls especially, that when you value your education, there are, there are doors and opportunities that open up, right? That there is a career to be had for knowing your shit. This could not only be something that... This could be young adult. Her first years as a professor. You can be a professor at 25. That's... that's Or new adult, I suppose, would be that. Into, into adulthood, right? Uh, hard work pays off. This is the value of education and educators. Put a main character out there that's going to sway people from thinking, oh, the academic, right? The, the okay. ivy walls of the academe. We don't need those in middle America, right? You're instilling it in people from an early age that those are important people. In fact, even in here, a lot of your teachers are just, your professors, I'm sorry, well, are these teachers or these professors? I don't know. They seem like they've got doctorates in wizardry, uh, in, in witchisms. Uh, they're not strong characters. They are to be made fun of. Show us that education pays off. This is a strong female in a leadership role. Until you got to the education argument, I thought you were just pining over Hermione Granger again. Well, yeah, but I had to go somewhere. Okay, I'm, at least you wrapped it up with that. Uh, Lupin, 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 we're gonna get there. You will enjoy him. Right, okay, but get on the social justice bandwagon then. Don't you want a strong female character in a role like that? That's Is fine. Lupin male or female? You are going to get strong female characters. But can we get a new series with Hermione? And just, just show that lifestyle for what it is. Her hard work in, in these years pays off. She's got to deal with that Potter kid. She gets uh, through that. Oh, God. The last book is going to break you. Does Hermione die? So, we're going to get there. Don't tell me that. Uh, if you would like to see Adrian's journey through Harry Potter, Does make Hermione sure... Does Hermione die so Harry has to marry Ginny? Make sure that you hit that like and that subscribe JK, button. JK, if you killed Hermione, we're not friends anymore. Follow us on Facebook, at Strip Cover Lit, on Twitter. I know Twitter. we're barely friends now, and you don't really return my text messages after, you, you know, the restraining order and whatnot. On but, Twitter... Uh, at strip cover. This is Adrian Anyway. I am the Dalton. Follow us on Twitter, shoot us a message, and we can hash this out in private. 
I, I don't know where to go after that. I'll forgive you. I'll forgive. Couldn't I mean resurrection could be a thing in the magic world? Ooh, Adrian. What is that? I'm a scary dementor, Adrian. Yay, <laughs> If we bust up. <laughs> this has to happen. Thank you. I just invented Tumblr. You good? <laughs> that fucking voice told me. <laughs> what the fuck is that? Does it work? Yes. All right. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> We're going to put no work into these skits whatsoever. They're going to be the best ones we've ever done. <laughs> I can't do this right now. You got it. You got it. Maintain. <clears throat> I, I don't even have a serious place I can go right now. That fucking sound takes me out. I'm so glad I'm not looking at you right now. Oh. Okay. Now that I'm covered in sweat and tears. <laughs> Do we need to smoke? No. Okay. <laughs> this is why people hate us. <clears throat> what are we doing with our lives? <laughs> Fucking this, man. This is my life's work. You and that fucking hat. Oh, Adrian. I'm a scary dementor, Adrian. <laughs> <laughs>